In Jesus' name, your chest is going to be fine. We believe and stand in agreement. Uh, let me give you a quick reminder before I get into the Word tonight. Quick reminder about this upcoming weekend. Men, those of you that are uh, playing in our golf tournament this weekend, uh, we tee off from Cross Creek at 8 a.m. Be there no later than 7.30 to register and get set up. Uh, so 8 o'clock tee time uh, on Saturday and then Sunday. Everybody say Sunday. It's going to be a big day. Starting at 9 o'clock in our fellowship hall will be uh, breakfast. It will uh, be our grandparents' day breakfast. So uh, encouraging you, uh, invite your grandchildren to come. Are you a grandparent? Maybe they live out, come. Or if you're not, just come and enjoy a good, good hot breakfast at 9 o'clock. We will start at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll start at 10 with our morning Sunday school class. And then at 11 o'clock, it's going 9, 10, 11. And at 11 o'clock, Dr. David Hamilton will be ministering the word as is our custom when he comes. Uh, as many of you know, this whole, this whole platform and down in, in, in on the floor, it'll all be, uh, if I could use the word, decorated or set up with the uh, tabernacle reproductions. And he will start at 11 o'clock or shortly thereafter teaching uh, on the subject of the tabernacle. And you do not want to miss this upcoming weekend. It would be something you need to invite a friend, family member, those in the community. You want to, we've got it on social media. We're, we're blitzing it out. And I, I just have a feeling we're going to have a great, great representation. And it will be Sunday at 11 and Sunday evening at 5. There will be no music. There will be no praise team. It, we will open up with prayer few announcements and we're going to turn him loose and uh, that's the way he prefers to do it and you are going to it's just going to be life changing that's all I can say you just bring bring a pen piece of paper and get ready to learn uh, on the subject matter of the tabernacle so it will go Sunday morning Sunday night Monday Tuesday Wednesday Monday through Wednesday at seven o'clock sister Ann Let's remember Mark. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, it will be at 7 o'clock. Uh, so I'm asking all of you, please do your best to come and support, uh, support this uh, revival. This is the, of anybody in 10 years that we have brought into the church uh, to minister, this is still the single most requested ministry to come and be a part of our church. So it's been about five, almost six years since Brother Hamilton has been here. And so uh, looking forward to it. It's going to be a great time. Hallelujah. Let's pray for Brother Mark right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, you know the situation, you know the condition of Brother Mark Pitts. I'm asking that you touch his body. Lord, that there would be a miracle, touch his breathing. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. We ask it in faith and know that you're able. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I am so excited to be uh, here in the house of the Lord. We had a great service with Brother Staten on Sunday. Brother Wesley taught last Wednesday, and I'm just excited to be back in the pulpit teaching the Word of God, finishing our, finishing our series tonight on habits. Somebody say habits. Habits. And I will give you a few things that we have discussed uh, in previous times. Uh, it's the small things that no one sees that result in the big things everyone wants. Successful people do consistently what other people do occasionally. We don't rise to the level of our goals we fall to the level of our systems. We are what we repeatedly do. And the last Wednesday that I taught, discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want most. So tonight, I want to continue in this vein of preaching or teaching. And I want to teach you on habits. Everybody say thoughts. So often we hear 
that we should fix our thoughts. But if we would all be honest, we have fought the thing that I am going to speak about first probably more times than not throughout the course of our life because we are dominated by this one word and that is procrastination. Everybody want to say amen on that? Procrastination has become the biggest, one of the biggest enemies of producing change in our life because it's things like, I'll start tomorrow or I'll put that off for a more convenient time. And, but here's, the, here's something that we must all come to grip with, that, that if I don't fix my thoughts, thoughts become words, words become actions, actions become habits, Habits become my destiny. Life, if you're going to write something down, you'll see these on the screen in just a second. Life will always move in the direction of your strongest thoughts. You think about that. Your life will always move in the direction of your strongest thoughts. You've got verses, Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Think you can, you probably won't. Think you can, you probably will. Dwell on problems, you, you feel overwhelmed. Uh, you look for opportunities, uh, you're likely going to see some. It's all in what you focus on. It's all in your thoughts and what you allow your mind to dwell on and think upon. Do you feel like a victim? You'll become one. Believe you're an overcomer? You can. It's all in what you allow your mind to consistently think on. I'm going to say it again. Life will always move in the direction of your strongest thoughts. That little train that thought it could finally got there because... It said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And before long, it had accomplished what it thought it could do. Now, I know we're, and you hear me, you've heard me say this over the years. You know, we had a vision to build this building. Now, to most people, they think we're crazy. We're people of faith. There is no way... It adds up on paper. There's no way that this can happen in this city. But you're talking to people. You're talking to families who believe in the power of a thought, a power of vision, a power of a made up mind. And you know what? You think about it long enough. Uh, you put hard work behind it long enough. Uh, and before long you're going to realize, you know what? Uh, this all happened because somebody had a thought. Somebody had a vision and then put the necessary work Behind that vision, we move in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Believe you can and you will. Thought audit. When's the last time you did an audit on your thoughts? Do an audit on your thoughts right now. Are you worried about your children? Worried about money, worried about your health, about your future. If we're not careful, our thoughts will get consumed over things that we can't even control. We're worried about things tomorrow and tomorrow hadn't even got here. We're worried about next week and next week is not even promised. But it's like sitting in a rocking chair. Worry, and you've heard this illustration. Worry is just like sitting in, the, sitting in that rocking chair thinking you're going to go somewhere. You're not going anywhere. You're just rocking back and forth. Worried about all of the things that really you can't change with human means and uh, human ability. Uh, but what if we did a thought audit and we stopped and paused just for a few moments and said, you know what? I will be secure in the promises of God and I will do what I can that's within my power but at the end of the day I've got to find the peace that passeth all understanding that can only come from the Lord Jesus Christ 
Hallelujah. Too many times we try to take on so much upon ourselves, upon our plate. And, and I just, maybe I need to remind all of us, we're not God. He is. Come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I believe we're living beneath the privilege of a place full of peace when we allow ourselves not to do a thought audit every now and then. Do a thought audit and say, you know what, I'm worried about this too much. I'm worried about it too much. I, I, I'm letting it get the best of my emotions. Do you know COVID-19 has, has put so much fear into people? I think if we all be honest, at the beginning of it, we didn't even want to get out of our house. We were scared to go down the road. We were scared, man, this thing is going to... It's going to reach up and grab us. And I'm not trying to minimize it being real. Please, I'm not, poke, I'm not saying anything. But what I'm saying is there's a spirit of fear that can get behind something, uh, behind our thoughts uh, until we just whittle away. And spiritually we're drained. Spiritually we're not where we were six months ago. Come on, somebody. We've allowed a, a, a COVID-19 to to drain us of our spiritual vitality. That's not the will of God. We should be stronger right now because we've prayed more. We've been more faithful to the house of God. We've read our Bible more. We've got into deep communication and relationship with Him. Or, oh God, I'm scared to go to Walmart. I might get the virus. Come on, somebody. Y'all acting like. I'm just telling you. We can be domi- Our thoughts can be dominated by fear. Or I can be dominated by faith. That's where we've got to get. We've got to get dominated. Our thoughts have got to be dominated by faith. Too many times uh, we, we can go the route of being negative. I know none of you are. But we can get so negative. We can get critical of everyone. We can find fault. We can get discontented. Come on, somebody. Or we can do a thought audit and say, you know what? I've been too negative this week. I don't know what's wrong with me. Maybe I hadn't prayed. I hadn't got up at six like I needed to get up and pray and get on my back. And I have. I'm just giving you an. I was, I was there on that back porch this morning with my Bible praying for all of you. My list. Pray. But you know what? If I don't pray, if we don't pray, we'll find ourselves being negative. We'll find ourselves being critical. We'll find ourselves blaming God and finding fault and being discontent and wondering, Lord, am I doing the right thing? But if I'm praying, if I'm doing a thought audit, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to see the positive. I'm going to believe the best in people. I'm going to believe that life is good. I am going to be optimistic uh, about the future. Hallelujah. I just need to remind somebody. I, I, I know we've got an election coming up here in, in just a few months. We've got to get optimistic about the future. We've got to start praying like we ain't never prayed before. And we all better go vote. Come on now. I know y'all are listening good tonight, and I love it. We got to see the positive in people. Believe the best. Know that life is good. Optimistic of the future, and always live with this understanding. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. I I believe the preacher said it on, uh, on Sunday. We can get this envisionment of the American dream, and when God doesn't line our... Lined up with our vision of the American dream, we blame him. We've got to get optimistic about the future. And you know what? It may get worse before it gets better. But I still need to remind you and I need to remind the devil. God's still in control. He knows. He's already already written the back of the book. And we're going to win this thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I cannot let my mind get so consumed with this life, uh, with material things. Uh, uh, You know, we may not be liked by everybody. But you know what? Uh, We've got to make up in our mind we're going to make an eternal difference. Uh, We're going to give and we're going to reach people. Hallelujah. Romans 12 and 2. 
Romans 12, 2, and you'll see it on the, on the screen. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. I like the New Living Translation. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Hallelujah. Changing the way you think. How? I know some of you are saying, my Lord, this sounds so good, but how do I change the way you think? How can I change the way that I think? Capture destructive thoughts. Capture destructive thoughts. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Now for too long, we have bought into the idea and we have told ourselves, I can't and I won't change. Or I'm not good enough, I can't change, or I never can be happy. And we bought that thought process and we bought that that mindset but here's what I want to help you with tonight is if I can get you to capture those destructive thoughts that tell you you can't or you won't or I'm not good enough or I made this mistake and I'll never recover I'll never get over this or I'll never be happy I made a mistake you know X amount of years ago I'll never be and you know what we wake up every day with a tormenting thought process that I'll never move forward but if I can get you to to categorize or to move and fall some of the allow some of these thoughts to fall into a category I believe you're going to be liberated tonight everybody say truth or trash. If I can start understanding my thoughts and start putting it truth or, or, or trash. Now, we've all seen it come short of the glory of God. Everybody say amen. And some of us believe that I can't make a difference after what I've done. Is that truth or trash? Is that truth or trash? You can still make a difference no matter what you've done. But the enemy just condemns and brings destructive thoughts into our spirit that says you can't make a difference. After what you've done. And it becomes truth in our thought process. When in reality it's nothing but trash. You just need to wake up. There's somebody that needs to hear your testimony. There's somebody that needs to know. I can relate to what you've been through. Uh, There's somebody out there. That is going through similar or certain circumstances. That if they hear your story. They can believe they can change. They can believe, you know what? I can capture my destructive thinking and become something for the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. No, well, I'm just stuck in life. Truth or trash? That's trash. You're not stuck in life. No, 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 no. You're an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am who God says I am. Is that truth or trash? That's truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you've just blown it. Truth or trash? Trash. God works all things for your good. See what I'm saying here? we got to start to, you know what? I'm putting some things in my mind in the trash can. 
I'm not going to allow those thoughts uh, to dictate to me about my future, about who I am and how God sees me. I know how God sees me because I've read it in His Word. I understand through His Word all things work together for the good. Yes, we like sheep have all went astray. Yes, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. But can I tell you, even in my weaknesses, His strength is made perfect. Perfect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I've got to truth or trash it. And then I've got to fix my thoughts on spiritual things. Philippians 4, 8 and 9. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable, and right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Then the God of peace will be set with you. Everybody say, I'm an evangelist. If you'll get this one revelation, it's not necessarily what you do, it's who you are. I am created to reach people that are far from God. That's what I was created to do. I was created to bring individuals, to first get myself back in a relationship with God. We were ostracized. We were torn by sin and separated from God at birth. We were all born in sin, shaped in iniquity. But we've made, been made nigh to Him by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now our job as an evangelist, uh, fixing our thought on spiritual things, uh, God now helps us uh, to reach people who are far from God. And we bring people for the cause uh, that's greater than us to Jesus Christ uh, so they can receive the same Holy Ghost, receive the same baptism, receive the same peace and joy that you have. Hallelujah. So... Fixing your things on spiritual things is so easy by nature to be carnally minded. It's very easy to be carnally minded. By nature, it's the sin nature. But if we can fix our thought on spiritual things, we'll begin to find what we're looking for. What do you mean by that? How about reading your Bible? What about prayer? What about getting involved in the kingdom of God? Maybe you've been hesitant in getting involved in the kingdom of God because the enemy has just beat you down because of things you've done years ago. And you feel like, I'm unworthy to get involved. I'm unworthy to do anything. And that old enemy plagues and, and, and just rat, ridicules you in your thought process and you sit idle. But what if involvement, what if you begin to pray? What if you begin to be thankful? I promise you, your thoughts are going to shift and you'll begin to see God everywhere. You'll see God in the faces of people that he brings into your path. You'll begin to see things you've never seen before when you begin to fix your thought on spiritual things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'll wake up one day and understand that truly people do need the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a special peace that comes. There is a special peace and rest that come to the people of God. I believe that. There is no life any better than living for the Lord. There's nothing better. Our worst day in the church is better than our best day in the world. Hallelujah. And I, I purposed in my, in my preparation for this message tonight. I want to do my best to enter into the rest that the Bible calls where the weary can find rest. What, what, my mind rests at night. My mind's not spinning completely out of control worrying about What's going to happen tomorrow? What's happening next week? Or what happened last year? Or 10 years ago? I can do all things through Christ. Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ. I trust God with everything I can't control. With God's help, I can change. Somebody say, I can change. I said, with God's help, anybody can change. 
Well, you don't know, you don't know how bad, I don't care how bad they are, how far away they are. With God's help, anybody can change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not by my strength or my power. God's spirit is what makes the difference. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you are a new creature in Christ. The old man is gone and the new man is come. Hallelujah. You become a new creation in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say thoughts. Everybody say words. Thoughts become words because words become actions. Proverbs 18, 21, the tongue has the power of life and death. I'm dealing with thoughts and I'm dealing with words because those two things have a, a huge role, if not just a paramount role in developing healthy habits. Change the life you have by changing the words you speak. I want a different life. I want a better life. Change the words you're speaking today. You reckon that works? I know it works. Small changes in the words we speak create big differences in the life that we live. Goes back to being negative. You're negative every day you get up out of the bed. You know what kind of life you're going to be? Have a very negative life. You start speaking positive. Well, it ain't happened yet. I've tried to... Keep speaking it, keep speaking it, keep speaking it, keep believing it, keep declaring it. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Say, that's my tongue. Don't wait for me to speak life over you every Sunday and every Wednesday. You start speaking life over you on Monday and Tuesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. Before long, you're going to wake up. You're going to have an understanding that my words do make a difference. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. James 3, 3 and 5. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in his mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go. And even though the winds are strong, in the same way the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest fire. You think about that. A large horse can be led wherever he needs to go with a small bit in his mouth. A small rudder can take a huge ship in any direction it may choose to go. And inside of our being is a mouth, a tongue, that can produce great eloquent speeches or just a tiny spark can send off a forest fire. So I now have to categorize my words. And as a pastor and as a leader, there's husbands, wives here, grandparents, single adults. You can probably relate. There are life-taking and life-giving words. Life-taking versus life-giving Every day you wake up, if all you do is ever vocalize and ever complain, man, I just got a bad marriage. Is that life-giving or life-taking? But what if I woke up tomorrow morning and start declaring, you know what, I'm going to have a good marriage. I'm going to have a great marriage. Or, man, I just hate my job. Life-taking. What if I woke up tomorrow and said, you know what, God, thank you for my job. Help me to understand those people that I work with that are making me miserable. I'm speaking life over my job. Life giving. I just don't want to be around people. Life taking. 
What if I woke up and said, you know what, I can't wait to get to church. I'm ready to get around the body of Christ and have some fun and fellowship. I'm ready for COVID-19 to be over with. I'm ready to, for us to just be able to, you know, not have to worry about a mask and, you know, six feet of social distance. I'm ready for a hug from a brother or sister in the Lord. And I, I'm ready just to get back to somewhat of what we call normal. And we start declaring life-giving words instead of life-taking I say it all the time. Is that glass half full or half empty? What, what, how do you think? Light, half full, half empty. If, if I say, well, it's half empty. I thought it was half empty. I, I can't believe this glass is half empty. I don't even know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I can't believe the pastor ain't called me. My glass is half empty. I ain't even got a text this week. Or, my God, I'm glad I got half of that water bottle. I'm saying I'm so thankful God's allowed me to preserve half the bottle of water. I'm so glad Pastor was at church on Wednesday night. I'm so glad that he. I'm so glad we got Brother Hamilton coming Sunday, and I'm going to invite a friend. And you know, life giving or life taking. We can, we, can, we can get in a realm of thinking if we're not careful. Our words, words. Have you ever been guilty of this? I have. I didn't mean it to come out that way. It just, ugh, it just came out. And it didn't come out the way I intended. But you know what? It come out as a life-taking word instead of a life-giving word. I don't know nobody in here has ever done that. But if we're not careful, it can become a way of life. Everything we say has just a little slant to it. Has a little life taking. Instead of edifying, instead of uplifting, instead of building up our most holy faith. We're taking and zapping life out of us. We're zapping our witness. We're zapping our zeal. We're zapping those th the, the things that God's trying to do in our life. We're taking it. Oh, right out of our, nobody else is doing it but us. We're, we're taking it, we're robbing our own selves by the words that we speak. Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived and he contrasted life taking words and life giving words constantly. Listen at Proverbs 12 and 18. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise is health. The, in Proverbs 15, 4. The soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. Life-giving, life-taking. Everybody getting it? Life-taking words versus life-giving words. Life-taking is, you see somebody... We'll just give you some very comical example. Well, you sure look pathetic tonight. Who fixed your hair? Where in the world did you get that dress? I hope nobody makes that mistake to their wife. Or looking at your kids and say, you ain't never going to amount to anything. Life taking. When they don't ever amount to anything... Could it be because you prophetically spoke it over them? You ain't never going to get a job. Ho, ho, ho. Why not say, you know what, baby, I'm praying for you today. I'm praying that the Lord would stir up a desire in your heart to go get a job. A little way of different saying it, but it's life-giving. I believe in you. I'm proud of you. I couldn't love you anymore. I love you. I love what you're wearing. Boy, you sure do look good tonight. Boy, I sure like the way you fixed your hair. Life giving. Some of you men, that may pay dividends for you. Your wife may be a little sweeter to you. Start complimenting her. Lord have mercy. What time is it? I know y'all ready to get out of here. Brother Guzman, you all right? Okay. If you can't say anything helpful, skip it. Can I get an amen in here? If you can't say something helpful, skip it. 
And sometimes you got to have tough conversations. And the, but there is a way to say it. Don't you just love people that always bring problems? They just bring problems. And I try to do that. When I bring a problem, I'm already thinking of a solution. Always, always, if you're going to present a problem, bring a solution. That's not always easy. But if we can start, if we can't say something helpful, skip it. Ephesians 4.29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Help build up others. Nobody elbowing their wives or their husbands right now. If you can't say something helpful, skip it. But if you think this is this is so good, if you think something good, say it. I heard somebody say this. I don't want you standing over my casket and telling me how good I was. I don't want you telling all these accolades over it if you ain't never said it to my face. I want you to tell me now. If I'm good, Tell me now, ain't that right, brother? It, it, you know, I can't hear it when you're standing over my dead body. If you think something good, say it. Somebody goes out of their way. I'm a brat. Brother Dodd has managed this whole, many of you have seen all this uh, dozier work back here, smoothing this out, making it drain. Water doesn't stand on the top now. Most of you didn't even know that. But all of this land is just, it's just been smoothed out and it looks a thousand times better. Got the pond cleaned out. And Brother Dodd managed that whole project for me. And Brother Dodd, you've done an absolutely outstanding job. And I give you a hand of appreciation. You've done a good job. There are things that people do all around us every day. Little things. If you think something good, say it. Boy, the church did smell good when I come in this morning. Somebody had to plug in. A, uh, somebody had to mop. Somebody had to spray. If you think something good, say it. Well, you come in and, you, man, you walked in this afternoon and did your wife have or maybe, maybe somebody cooked a meal and it was sitting there waiting on you to come in or maybe you didn't even eat lunch. They ain't even ate supper yet. But many times we come in and we flop down and we eat a meal and we don't even pause to say, you know what? Thank you. Thank you for taking time to cook and clean and do the little things of life that make the world go round. Don't rob someone of a blessing. Say something positive to somebody. Encourage them. It's the little words of encouragement that's going to make them try a little harder and do better in life. If you think, I'm going to say it, if you think something good, say it. And I'm going to help us all right here as I try to wind down my thoughts. Don't just encourage others with your words because a lot of us are good with that. We're good at encouraging others. And when we get done encouraging others, we take a back seat and we sit down. We feel drained because we, we give encouragement to everybody else. And we forget to encourage ourselves. While we're encouraging others with our words... Don't forget to encourage yourself. I'm not talking about somebody. I'm talking about you. David was at a point in his life where they wanted to stone him. But he said, time out, guys. I got to get by myself. I've been, I've been lifting you guys up. I've been promoting you. I know you want to stone me, but everything I've done was for your well-being. David had to take a time out and say, I've got to encourage myself in the Lord. 
We've got to pause in this, in the, and I hope and pray in your six o'clock morning prayers as you're praying and you're seeking the Lord. Whenever that time is that you pause long enough, God, I'm encouraging myself. God, I'm pouring back into myself because you know what? You created me to encourage everybody else, but I can't encourage everybody else and not encourage myself. Hallelujah. I've got to encourage myself. Paul said, I've got to think myself happy. In other words, I've got to encourage myself. If you want to see it, say it. If you, whatever you want to see, start saying it. Start speaking it. Say what you want to see. Say to this mountain. And that's what, that's the way you want to say it. That's the way I want. The way I'm saying it is the way I want it. Speak to this mountain. It shall be removed. What you want to see, start speaking it. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Just start speaking it. Waking to realize Christ in you is stronger than the appetites in you. I was praying this morning and I was, I said, God, help us. Paul would say, when I would do good, evil is present. When I would do the right, it was always lurking. It was always there. But the appetite in you must submit if you will allow. The thoughts, going back to thoughts, you've got to submit to the Christ that's stronger inside of you. Christ in you is stronger than the appetites in you. God, we got to start speaking. God is going to bless my home. God is going to help me get better and better. No, I'm not perfect. Yes, I've made mistakes, but you know what? It's not a cop out. It's not an excuse for, you know, easy greasy grace. But by the help and the strength of the Almighty God, my bet my good was it, my best was good enough for today, but tomorrow I'll be better. That's the way we got to start thinking. My best was good enough for today, but tomorrow I'm going to do better. Hallelujah. My children will grow in their faith and walk in truth. God's hand of favor is upon my children, is upon my life. I will walk in that. Do you know what happens when you start vocalizing that? When you start speaking that? You're going to start walking in it. You're going to start being attracted to those things that are after his favor. After his righteousness. My body is a dwelling place for the almighty God. Hallelujah. I will do what his word said I would do. I will not shy away from the commitments of holiness and righteousness and godliness. I am getting my body, my spiritual body in better shape every single day. And with God's power, I will overcome. I will cast down imagination. I will bring into captivity every thought. I will speak life over me. I will start declaring the goodness of of the Lord. Mm. If you want to change the life you live, change the words you speak. Can't say something helpful? Skip it. Small changes in the words you speak create big changes in the life you have. If you want to see it, say it. Words have the power of life and death. Change your thoughts. And I'm coming down to a close, quick close. Change your thoughts. Change the way you live. Change the words you speak. Change the results you see. You see that on the screen? Maybe you can see that. Change your thoughts. I've got to get my thoughts straight. It's going to change the way you live. Change the words you speak. Change the results you see. Tomorrow our challenge is this. When we get up. To the best of your ability. Find a place to pray. That's going to get your thought process moving in a direction of spiritualness. Maybe you're sitting here tonight and you're fighting. Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe it's destructive behavior. I don't know what it is. 
I just know what I feel in the Holy Ghost. There are some things that you've been wrestling and fighting and it seems like there's no peace. If I can get you to change your destructive thoughts and bring them into captivity, and then I can change your vocabulary. I'm changing my thoughts and changing my words. It will change who you are. It's just that easy. It's just that easy. If I change my thoughts, I'm going to change the way I'm living. And when I change my words, I'm going to see a result in me. You're going to see a result in you. You're going to be the life-giving force that God's destined for you to become. Why don't you stand all over this house? Hallelujah. It has been an amazing series on habits. And if you've not, for those of you that are watching online, thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in to what we have been journeying through over the last five weeks. I would encourage you, if you missed a lesson, to go back and watch one, two, three, and four and catch up to where we are. I do believe that if you will apply what I have spoke and what I have taught. I believe truly you will start seeing some differences and changes in your life. We have got an amazing weekend coming up. We have an amazing set of series of services and I'm asking you, you're going to examine the house this weekend. Where is God's house? I am God's house. God's going to challenge you to examine your house. You're going to be challenged in every service. This is not by accident. This is not just some rabbit I pulled out of the hat. God knew COVID was going to happen when it happened. God knew everything. I had him booked before COVID. This was on the schedule. This was on the... God knew. And it's time for us as a church to reevaluate, to reassess. And God's allowed us to evaluate and, and do a thought audit, do a habit audit. And as a result, we're getting ready to examine the house. We're getting ready to walk through the pattern of the tabernacle. And I believe, I believe that with God's help, we're going to see a great, great ushering in of His presence. And as Brother Hamilton and I spoke on the phone yesterday, he sent me a message. He said, I believe this is not a, 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 an accidental gathering. He said, this is not by accident. But he said, I believe when the tabernacle leaves, there will be something that stays that you will feel for months to come. It's going to be a residual flow of the spirit that's released in this house. I believe that. I believe that. Why don't you right now just lift your hands all over this house and ask God to help us. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we get ready to close this service, Lord, we're not being dismissed from your presence nor your spirit. But God, I'm asking you by the power of the Holy Ghost that you would prepare our hearts as we get ready to examine the house. We are God's house. We will learn the pattern of the tabernacle this weekend and this upcoming week. God, this place will be destined, God, to produce a, a, a revelatory word and an, and an experience. And God, I'm asking you, Lord, to help us prepare ourselves to receive the word of God the word of truth into our hearts. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. And everybody say amen. Quick, one quick reminder. This upcoming Sunday is our final collection day. If you have not yet turned in your She's for Christ pledge, we're asking that this Sunday would be the Sunday that we have designated to finish collecting all of the funds. Our goal, yes, it's a lofty goal, but I do believe that God is going to help us. And I just believe God's got a miracle in store for us as we get ready to come into this house on Sunday. May God bless you. If you've not already made a pledge to She's for Christ, it's not too late. You can be part of what God is getting ready to do through us as a church. Before you leave, our baskets are at the front. Feel free to come and return your tithe and offerings into the storehouse. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you.